the uh, end of day 23. I took a zero day in Damascus. And uh, last night I stayed at Tent City. Set up my tent. Uh, I think it was about 7 p.m. And I rolled into my sleeping bag at about 7.30. And I didn't wake up till about 8 this morning. So um, took a nice long snooze which uh, really, really felt good. Um, as, uh, as I said in my last video, I rolled into Damascus somewhere around 4 o'clock and was able to make it uh, in time to stop at CPAX. Totally took care of me. I'm going to show you guys what they did here in a second. And then uh, after that, I went straight to Tent City and called it a night. Um, and then uh, today I've just kind of uh, been spending the day, uh, went uh, to go get my resupply at Food City, which seemed to be the best option uh, if you want choices here in Damascus. And uh, went up to uh, the Dancing Bear bed and breakfast. I'm staying here. It's a nice little quaint place here. Here's my room. Uh, has a little closet in here. got a full-size bed it's got a little uh, chair as well so <clears throat> um, the uh, place is clean I don't remember what the name of uh, the lady that uh, runs it but she seems, seems really nice uh, when I came this morning to, to book a room tonight so I knew I'd have a room uh, the breakfast she was making looked really good so breakfast is uh, at 8 30 really excited about that tomorrow um, it's about 9.30 at night right now, so I'm trying to talk a little bit quietly because I, I don't know who's sleeping and who's not. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's a nice place. It, uh, a little bit more pricier than some of the places I've stayed at. I think it was 60, no, 70 bucks for me for a full size. So um, there's a, a few hikers that split a uh, double that uh, costed 100 I think. So they just chopped it 40, 40, 20, and one of the guys is sleeping on the floor, so... Um, but, uh, when I was coming down into Damascus yesterday, I was talking about how I didn't feel good and, uh, maybe I was dehydrated. Um, I will tell you that was probably my toughest day on the trail, even though it was the easiest, um, terrain, easiest, uh, uh section of the trail, um, because of most of the time, uh, I was descending. Uh, there wasn't a lot of ascent, ascents, uh, yesterday. But um, I really had to push myself in order to get off the trail because I felt that sick. But uh, I didn't have an appetite. I lost my appetite. I couldn't eat anything. Um, I felt like I wanted to vomit. Uh, I literally thought um, that I could be getting something like Giardia. I know one of, uh, one of the guys I was reading uh, that did a Appalachian Trail through hike last year in 100 days got Giardia and that was some of the signs and symptoms that he started seeing so um, it's kind of scary so anyway um, I, uh, I was I was kind of feeling fearing the worst and um, got a good night's sleep got my appetite back today and I feel so much better I'm gonna get another great night's sleep tonight I think I was just totally drained and exhausted um, I spent the most time on the trail without uh, stopping at a hostel or a hotel or a trail town um, between Irwin and Damascus. So I, I covered, uh, it's about 126 miles in uh, in about four and a half, five days. I left uh, Irwin at uh, 1030 on Tuesday. I got in Damascus at 4 p.m. on Saturday. It was tough. Um, I did a 30 mile day, uh, a couple 25s, a 27, and I think like a 23 or something. I can't really remember. But, uh, but definitely was uh, my toughest day. So feeling a lot better and my morale is way higher. Um, I mean, I, I was uh, probably at rock bottom yesterday. So um, it's amazing what a uh, 24 hour change uh, can do. So anyway, I stopped by Z-Packs and you guys remember some of the things that was going on with my, uh, my packs. I wanted to show what they did. So Joe looked at it and um, what he ended up doing is just cut off the uh, the belt of the little loop here that was holding the uh, two millimeter two millimeter cord, 
and uh, poked a hole through the bottom of this and uh, put some more cord in here and wrapped it around like four different times. It's really tight and uh, that really fixed that issue. So that should hold just fine. Another thing that he did, and I really didn't know this before, but he bent my external frame, the rods here, so that there's more of an arc. So I have a lot more airflow right now in here. If you remember before, you know, I maybe had, uh, I don't know, a finger's worth, so not even an inch. So I'm probably going to bend this a little bit more on this side. So uh, I have just as much space uh, I do on the left, on the right. But I'll tell you, it feels so much more comfortable. If you have a, uh, a Z-Packs pack, our glass, I was talking with a few other people and um, kind of shared the knowledge. So they did the same thing here at Trail Days. And uh, it's just incredible difference in comfortability and having the airflow. Um, so... Uh, didn't know if I was supposed to know to do that, but I didn't. But I tell you what, it just it made it so much more comfortable. And then they replaced my entire belt. So if you remember my old belt, the uh, other fabric loop right here uh, basically just uh, totally ripped away uh, because of when the rod came off, it was putting a lot of fric friction on there. So um, totally replaced my whole belt and uh, gave me a new belt pouch as well. So uh, I'm totally fixed. One thing I didn't even know is this rod right here will actually pop right out. It's the same rod that you have up here in your middle of support bar. But this pops out so you can take this belt completely off and wear it if you wanted to slack pack, um, which is totally cool. I didn't even think I could do that. So I learned something new. Um, so I am all ready to go on my pack. So really cool. They told me that if there's any other problems, let them know and they will totally fix it. Um, they stand behind their stuff, and I'm just uh, really thankful I was able to do that. A couple other things I did is, uh, after talking with some hikers, I ended up getting the uh, the front pouch. Um, so when I'm hiking, this will actually be in the front of my body. And uh, I'm getting, I got this because of, uh, really, all of the things I'm doing on the go. I need to be able to... Uh, quickly get into and out to of my stuff and uh, without having to take out my pack. It's just wasted time sometimes. So uh, I'll probably be storing a lot of my food that I'm eating during the day in here and just knickknacks and things like that, that uh, before I would have to take out my pack for or have to reach uncomfortably to get to. So um, we'll see how this works. But uh, the couple guys I met on the trail that have this, um, really, really liked it. So excited about that. And then I stopped at one of the outfitters and got new tips for my trekking poles. You didn't you didn't see the old tips, but uh, they were completely bent. At least I think the left one was completely bent just from all the wear and tear. And uh, I really had some abuse coming out of Davenport Cap on them. So it uh, cost me 12 bucks, and the uh, people at the Outfitters put it on for me for free, which was really cool. So I am all good to go. So uh, anyway, that's uh, a little bit about my gear. Everything else is holding up great. Um, my shoes. My shoes, <clears throat> I actually uh, had my parents send me my next pair of shoes. Um, you know, as you know, I got the nice big hole here that I have had since Westerbald. Um, hasn't really been too much of a pain, but it's getting a little bit bigger. But uh, my traction is on the front. I don't know how well you can see it, but there's uh, the front hot spot is, is basically completely gone almost. So I don't have hardly any traction in the front of my shoes. So and uh, I'm going to get my new pair of shoes in Miriam, which is uh, 62 miles from here. I plan on, uh, package will be there Tuesday. I plan on getting there on Wednesday. Um, hopefully I can uh, do a Nero. I would like to do no more than 15 miles to get into to uh, Marion, but we'll see what happens uh, over the course of the next uh, few days. Um, one of the places I'll be hitting is the uh, Grayson Highlands State Park, and that's where the uh, ponies run wild, so that's going to be really cool. So um, I'll get there when I get there. Uh, I'm really excited I'm done with the uh, Southern Appalachians. Um, the, uh, the upcoming section, the uh, Virginia Highlands, is going to be um, a lot different landscape than what we've been seeing. Uh, they call it the Green Tunnel, so 
there's um, many times where you just feel like you're just walking in a forest for miles and miles and miles and miles. Um, but, uh, but the terrain is, is a lot easier, not as many ascents or steep ascents and uh, mellows out a little bit. So it's uh, going to be favorable. Um, but uh, other than that, uh, everything is going good. I'm, I'm feeling a lot better. And after tonight's uh, rest, I'm just going to feel like a million bucks again. So um, I really want to try to get back on a schedule of uh, getting into a, uh, a town um, or a hostel or hotel every three days. That uh, formula seemed to work really, really well for me the first uh, 17 days. And I think the last, uh, this last little stint really threw me off. And too many miles without getting really... Um, I guess I'd call it a really good sound night's rest. So anyway, uh, I think that's uh, everything. Um, tomorrow, uh, like I said, I'll, I'll probably not I'll have breakfast at 8.30 and I realistically probably won't get on the trail until 10 or 11. I, uh, you know, I'll get on the trail when I get on the trail. I'm basically on the trail right now anyway. Um, but uh, I want to do a video, kind of show you around the town a little bit first before I go. So, but anyway, um, Thanks, guys, again, for all the support. Really excited I got a chance to uh, meet the z Pax team. Um, sat and chatted with uh, Red Beard for quite a while. He's someone that's inspired me to uh, get a lot of the uh, gear that I got. And, uh, you know, we were just sharing some stories and uh, some of the uh, challenges as well. And, uh, yeah, it was just it was just cool. Um, and I talked with uh, Daniel and Steph, and then of course uh, Joe, the owner of the company, uh, really hooked me up and we chatted for a little bit too when he was uh, taking care of my pack. So it's really cool just kind of putting, uh, you know, real life faces to the names, um, you know, uh, talking with them in person, so making that connection. So uh, anyway, I'm super excited, had a great time in Damascus. I probably want to come back. If I uh, finish the trail, I would love to come back next year to uh, um, come, kind of come to the reunion as a uh, 2016 through hiker would be really cool and uh, kind of do more of the experience piece since uh, most of it I was just too exhausted for. So, all right, guys, well, <coughs> I'm going to sign off here. Bigfoot uh, Day 23, zero Damascus. Uh, loving it and feeling a lot better. All right, guys, Bigfoot out. Hello, good morning, everyone. So uh, I'm walking down the uh, main street here in Damascus, Virginia, which is uh, Laurel Avenue. And wanted to show you guys a little bit of Damascus and downtown. Uh, so I stayed at uh, the Dancing Bear Bed and Breakfast in my zero day. And uh, it was absolutely amazing to get off, uh, get off the ground from the tent and actually sleep in a real bed. Last time I had done that was six days before that in Irwin, so it was uh, it was pleasant. So I definitely recommend the bed and breakfast. Uh, had a pretty good breakfast. I uh, wish it was a little bit more food, but uh, the lady that owns the bed and breakfast, Melissa, is really nice, very accommodating. Uh, they have I think they can sleep a total of 24 people there, um, but uh, it was a nice place. So. Uh, a little bit about Damascus um, it is uh, said to be the friendliest trail town in the, uh, on the Appalachian Trail, and I would definitely agree with that. It, uh, it's been really great. This is uh, a nice little town. Uh, you know, everything is basically run by uh, small businesses. Um, the only big, I guess, uh, company that's in here is Subway. Damascus actually has seven different trails that intersects through the town. Uh, the most popular, of course, is the Appalachian Trail that goes right through the heart, which we're actually on right now. Um, heading north, we're heading south right now. Um, and then, uh, real quick, there's uh, Mount Rogers Outfitters. That is the, uh, the best, or many refer as the best outfitter for uh, hikers on the entire Appalachian Trail. It's specifically designed for outfitters, excuse me, designed for hikers. It's all they carry is hiking stuff. 
So very knowledgeable, uh, the guy that owns it, Damascus Dave, opened it back in 1991 and uh, still stays involved, but his, I think his son runs the, uh, the business. Um, trail, oh, so going back to the, uh, the seven trails. So there are a total of seven trails that go through Damascus. Uh, Appalachian Trail, the Virginia Creeper Trail, which uh, is a 34 mile uh, bike path that uh, is part of the Rails to Trails project. And uh, I think it opened back in 87, really uh, boosted the uh, economic, uh, or was an economic engine for the town of Damascus here. Uh, and uh, I guess, you know, once we get through the hiker season, which kind of is just wrapping up here after trail days, uh, they get a lot of bikes, bicyclists. Uh, so what uh, a lot of folks do is they come down here and there is uh, multiple bicycle shops down here in Damascus and they'll shuttle them to the top of the creeper trail and it is a, uh, a slow decline all the way down here through Damascus and I think it ends like seven and a half miles from here. So um, a lot of people do that. It takes them uh, two to three hours and it's just a nice little uh, subtle uh, trek down. Now if you go the other way it would be a little different. Um, and then there's the Iron, I think it's the Iron Mountain Trail. I don't know how long that is. Um, another big popular one is the uh, Transamerica Bicycle Trail, um, and or it's also been referred to, I think, as the Transcontinental Bicycle Trail. Uh, it's a 4,250-mile bicycle path, uh, path that uh, extends from Oregon to Virginia, depending on which side you uh, start and end on. I guess most folks start in Oregon and head out east uh, to Virginia, ends in Yorktown and passes through here in Damascus. Um, some of the highlights you pass, uh, you go over the Mississippi River obviously and you go through Yellowstone National Park. Um, they started it back in 1976 to commemorate the uh, Declaration of Independence and uh, 4,000 bicyclists, I guess, took part in the tour, the 4,250 mile tour. And today, uh, people continue to do it solo uh, all the way. So, uh, and then there's like, four other trails, I, I can't remember the names of all of them. So kind of cool, so uh, you get a lot of visitors here, um, whether it's hikers, bicyclists, um, runners, but bicyclists and hikers are the big. Um, there's another big outfitter, Venture Damascus. Hi guys. Hey. And uh, here's one of the resupplies, Dollar General. Pretty much the uh, same things that uh, we got here in most of the other trail towns. So I, I resupplied in Food City, and uh, Food City was definitely the, uh, the way to go. Um, my personal uh, opinion, um, it's a little bit of a walk. You, uh, you take, uh, once you uh, get off of, uh, you're actually still on the AT when you get into town, and you go through the pavilion in the park, um, you can just continue heading straight. I, I don't remember what the name of the road is, maybe like 58 or something like that. Um, and, uh, and that will take you up to Food City. Uh, you'll At the end of the park, you'll hit uh, Laurel Avenue here. The road kind of turns, so if you take a right, you'll head through the heart of Damascus, which is where the AT goes through. Um, or you can uh, just keep on going straight and that will head you up to Food, C Food City. Like I said, that's a regular grocery store and was uh, had everything that you possibly need. So I <clears throat> I have learned that uh, I will make the extra trek to get the food that I want instead of uh, just you know sticking to like the Dollar Generals. I really don't like resupplying the Dollar Generals. Here's uh, another popular shop, the Blue Blaze Shuttle. Uh, I think they're big into the. Uh, shuttling for the Virginia Creeper Trail. Um, so Trail Days was this last weekend here. Uh, it is always the weekend after Mother's Day. And Trail Days started back in 1986 uh, for the 50th anniversary of the Appalachian Trail. And they wanted to do something special. And they looked at the town of Damascus to do that. And uh, it became so popular that they decided to keep on uh, doing the trail days, annual event, and it's bigger than ever. Um, 
there are some 25,000 people that come to, uh, to trail days to uh, enjoying all the festivities. So I, uh, I made it kind of at the butt end. Um, the, uh, most of the events start on Thursday night and go through Saturday night. There are a few things on Sunday, but all of the gear reps and uh, everyone uh, basically stick around through Saturday night and leave Sunday morning. Um, so this is where you would uh, head up to Food City. Here's a double blaze. Um, the rail I have is that way. Um, right now we're just going through uh, the, uh, the park right now. Um, this is actually the Virginia Keeper Trail. Goes right over through the, uh, the bridge that goes over the river there. Um, and uh, what else was I gonna say? Something else about trail days. Oh, uh, so it was crazy down here. Um, lots of people there. I don't know how many gear reps there were, maybe 70. Um, it, uh, it was really cool, you know, I, because I was feeling so terrible and sick and, uh, and tired, exhausted. The only place I really went to was z -Packs, and uh, they totally hooked me up, like I said. Um, but it was, uh, it was nice. Uh, but uh, I did not get any chance to really enjoy anything else in Trail Days, so my plan is uh, if I can complete the Appalachian Trail uh, successfully, I'd love to come back maybe next year and uh, do the Trail Days hike in the parade as a uh, 2016 through hiker um, a lot of people that come through here are hikers that uh, used to uh, that hike the trail before and it's kind of like a reunion a reunion so pass through hikers so hopefully I am uh, one of those in 2016 um, this is the pavilion where they play all the music and they have all the food vendors and all that um, today is Monday uh, day 23, 24, day 24, I think. So, uh, I'm getting a late start. It's almost noon. It uh, took me a while to upload a bunch of my videos. I still have two more left, but I'm just going to do them when I uh, get into Marion. But anyway, uh, yeah, this is where all the magic happens on trail days. So, um, so that's a little bit of Damascus, a little bit about the history and the town. Uh, you know, it's been great here. It, uh, they definitely are super accommodating to hikers. And, uh, you know, I enjoy my time. If, uh, if you're coming through here and you are trying to do some laundry, the only two places that uh, will do laundry, there's no laundromats here, which is different than most of the trail towns that, that have hit so far. <clears throat> but uh, if you're not staying at a specific place that will launder, like uh, the Dancing Bear, and breakfast did not do laundry. Um, the only uh, two places that will actually do your laundry uh, is Crazy Larry's and Woodchuck Hostel. Um, I think it's like six bucks at Crazy Larry's and five bucks maybe at Woodchuck Hostel. They're on uh, opposite ends of the town, so it kind of depends on you know, where you're going. But uh, so that was. Uh, you know, I guess I was the only pain is trying to figure out how to do laundry. Um, I didn't make the cutoff time in Tent City. If you come down here for trail days in Tent City, they have showers, they have Wi-Fi, they have uh, folks that are doing your laundry. And uh, I just, you know, getting because I was feeling so sick, I didn't get a chance to take advantage of any of that stuff. So I really wasn't able to do all that stuff until uh, just yesterday or today. Um, so, anyway, uh, my plans, you know, I, I gotta say, I, a lot of my stress, uh, or pressure has really been taken off my shoulders since getting into Damascus. Uh, I knew that if I get to Damascus, uh, by some time during trail days, that, that would kind of set up my hike. And... Uh, you know, now that I'm here, I feel really good. Looking at the terrain for Virginia, you know, I uh, looked at the next few hundred miles, and it is uh, 
a lot different than the section that we just hiked. We'll, uh, today I'll get up into the 5,000 foot altitude. And after that, uh, you know, once we get down below that, which is, I don't think, it, I, that's up in the Grayson Highlands. But after the uh, Grayson Highlands State Park, I don't think we hit 5,000 until we get into the whites. So it's gonna be nice. Um, you know, normally coming out of a trail town, uh, you hike down in the trail town. Most trail towns are somewhere in the 18 to 2,000 foot elevation. And then you gotta hike all the way up to five, maybe even 6,000 feet. Um, coming off Montana, it was 6,700. So it's tough. So this is, this is the last big one coming out. Uh, we ascent for quite a while, um, but it's, it's more gradual than the other trail towns. But, but the train really starts to mellow out. So that uh, takes a lot of pressure off of me, just because I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a lot easier for me to do um, the miles I have been doing now, uh, going into Virginia, than it was in the Southern Appalachians. So um, I'd love to get to, you know, when I'm feeling really good, I'll, I'll just hike the extra miles, get ahead. And when I'm not, it's a great day, like it's a gorgeous day out today. I'll spend extra time on uh, the summits, enjoying nature, enjoying the trail, uh, you know, maybe doing more Nero's and things like that. So, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, I'm really looking forward to it. So, I uh, want to be in Marion by Wednesday. Uh, hopefully I can have someone of a Nero going into Marion on Wednesday. And then I, uh, once I get my package and I'll stay at uh, one of the lodges there, I plan on uh, making my next stop in, uh, uh, I think, Troutville, uh, Daleville, Troutville, which is about 100 miles past Marion. So, um, which shouldn't be a problem with the train. That should take me about four days. And uh, after that, I might take a, a zero in there, depending on how things go. So, but, uh, yep, it's going good right now. Uh, really, the only time crunch I have is just making this trail now uh, before I go back to work on August 8th. Ideally, July 31st, and that would be the 100 days. Um, I really would like to get somewhere in the 950 mile range when my parents uh, fly into DC. So, uh, so it's not too much of a drive for them to pick me up. And uh, when they drop me back off with my brother, um, I'm in a good spot, I'm ahead of pace, or I'm right on pace, where I can slow down a little bit for, uh, for him and we can enjoy, uh, enjoy the trail. And, uh, and then after that, we'll get out of Virginia and I'll be in the lowlands. And I mean, it is flat compared to everything else that we've been doing. So I'll be able to make up even more ground uh, in there. So. All right, well, so that's kind of my plans. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, oh, one other thing. Uh, if anybody knows out there, I, one of the most difficult things that, uh, you know, I'm trying to do here on the trail is upload my YouTube videos. I think I said that, mentioned that in one, one of my other YouTube videos. Um, me and Redbeard were uh, talking and joking about it. Uh, Redbeard took 45 zeros when he did the AT uh, back 2014, I think is when he did it. And uh, there were some times he would just take an extra zero just so he could get caught up on uploading videos. And uh, I wish I had that time, but I don't. So uh, one of the things that would be extremely helpful for me is if, uh, if I knew of a way that my iPhone will not go to auto lock. So, I have the setting right now at the max, which is five minutes. But when I'm uploading videos, if I don't have the best Wi-Fi connection, I have to uh, basically, basically maybe sit next to my phone and you know, touch the screen, whatever, so that it doesn't go to auto lock. If it goes to auto lock, uh, after I don't know how many minutes, my video will abort and won't upload. So. If anybody knows how to turn off the auto lock function where my phone will never go to auto lock, then I can basically, you know, upload videos, walk away from my phone and do other things 
and uh, not have to babysit. That would be extremely helpful. So, so uh, you guys know, just uh, comment below. I'm reading all your guys' comments. Uh, thanks for uh, uh, all the inspiring things you guys have been saying, and it's really helping out. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm going to continue to try my best to uh, kind of give you guys a snapshot of what I'm going through, what I'm feeling, and how my track is going, and, you know, put my personal touch on it as well. So, all right, guys, well, I'm going to start hiking in day 20, what did I say, 24, 25. Um, I, I, I lose count now. 24. And uh, see how many I can get in today. But uh, it's a nice day. It's going to storm the next couple days. So, um, we'll see what happens. All right, guys, big foot out. Thank you.